مشاهدينا برحب فيكم وين ما كنتوا عم تتابعونا بلبنان وبالعالم اليوم حلقه حلقه جدا مميزه مع ضيف من اصول لبنانيه اهله غادروا الى بلاد الاغتراب واسسوا برا ولكن لبنان بقي بقلوبهم ونقلوا نقلوا هالحب للبنان لاولادهم ودائما نحن بنحاول انه نضوي على طاقات وابداعات الجالية اللبنانية وين ما كانت موجودة بالعالم. السيد سيرجيو خليل the director of the Latin American Center for the Lebanese Study سيليبال أو مدير المركز الأمريكي اللاتيني للدراسات حول لبنان أهلا وسهلا فيك معنا. Uh, we are so honored to have you uh, Mr. Sergio Khalil with us, Dr. Sergio Khalil. Uh, tell us about your Lebanese roots and what does it the country of cedars uh, Lebanon means to you عم بسال الدكتور خليل يخبرنا اكثر عن اصوله اللبنانيه وشو بيعني له او شو بتعني له بلاد الارز Thank you Pamela for this interview and uh, for having me on uh, Mariam TV and giving me the opportunity to discuss with you uh, my relationship to Lebanon and the Lebanese diaspora and what I think of Lebanon Uh, you asked me what are my Lebanese roots and in fact I have a very deep Lebanese roots because four of my four grandparents were born in Lebanon. Three of them emigrated to Argentina at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, my father himself was born in Lebanon and emigrated at a very young age uh, to Argentina himself in the middle of the 20th century. And I was born in Argentina, uh, but I was raised in a, in, 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 in a family Or with Lebanese traditions, with Lebanese food, with Lebanese beliefs, with Lebanese values. Even when we went to church, I uh, used to see the Lebanese flag. You know, my father had the flag of Lebanon in his car, and his, uh, uh, you know, his uh, license plate in the car had the cedar of Lebanon. So Lebanon was was part of my of my life. And uh, when you think of of of, of what's my DNA. I have no other uh, DNA that it's not Lebanese. So my full DNA is Lebanese. I, uh, I don't have any cell in my body or in my blood that, that didn't come from Lebanon. So that's why I have a very deep attachment. But also I got very fond of Lebanon uh, when, I get, when I got to know Lebanon by the traditions that I was taught in my house and by educating myself, reading a lot of books that, you know, whatever came across, Uh, to me about Lebanon. I was reading and I was buying books and as uh, you know, I've been collecting books on Lebanon for a great part of my life. I've, I've, I have over 500 books on Lebanon and uh, I keep buying every time I see one. I, I feel myself uh, uh, really uh, part of this nation. Uh, although I was, as I said, I was born in Argentina and then I live in the United States. I had three citizenships. I have an Argentinian citizenship, I have the American citizenship, and obviously the Lebanese citizenship, because I was registered two days after I was born by my father at the Lebanese embassy. But when you ask me what I am, my instinct, instant answer to you would be I'm a Lebanese. Although I may, may think like an American, may behave like an Argentinian, but my soul and my, my, my intimate feelings are definitely Lebanese. So uh, that's why I think it's, uh, you know, my connection is, is, is very strong. I also, I would say that it, they got even stronger when I went to visit Lebanon for the first time. Unfortunately, because of the war uh, in the 70s, I wasn't able to go when I was uh, young. So I had to wait till later, you know, I was later in life in the mid 20s, the first time I went to Lebanon. And even was during the very hard times for Lebanon, I definitely fell in love with the country. And I think this is very important because anybody who visits Lebanon falls in love with Lebanon. The difference is that when you are Lebanese, you go to Lebanon and all of a sudden everything makes sense. Everything that you've learned in your house, everything that you've read in the books, everything that you've been told about Lebanon, you realize is, is, is actually there and more. So, uh, The feeling of, of, of falling in love in Lebanon, it's very, very common um, you know, for anybody who visits the country. But when you're Lebanese, you definitely uh, discover and you, you uncover everything that was within you. And, and it, it, you, your life begins to make sense because you realize that this is a place where you definitely belong, although you might have never been there before, 
or maybe your future is not there. Maybe your future is in another country, but you definitely belong to Lebanon and Lebanon also belongs to you. So that's, that's my feeling uh, about uh, Lebanon. نعم بيقول بيقول انه علاقته جدا قويه بلبنان جدوده خلقه بلبنان وثلاثه منهم هاجروا على هاجروا من لبنان و بقلبه موجود لبنان وبعدين بعدين هاجروا على الارجنتين وخلق بالارجنتين دكتور سيرجيو ولكن كبر بعائله بهم التقاليد اللبنانيه وكان بيو دايما معه العلم اللبناني بسيارته الدي ان اي تبعه لبناني وكان يقرا كثير كتب عن لبنان وعنده تقريبا اكثر من 5000 كتاب بيحكي عن لبنان هو بينتمي للبنان معه الهويه اللبنانيه الهويه الامريكيه والارجنتينيه ولكن بس حدا يساله عن اصوله دغري بيقول انا لبناني وبيقول انه زار لبنان ووقع بحبه وكل شيء كل شيء بتعرفوا عن لبنان بيصير له معنى من بعد ما تزور لبنان لانه هيدا المكان يلي انا بنتمي له دكتور خليل يو هاف ذات وذ ماني اورجانيزيشن ابراد از ويل از بي از هافينغ ذا اكسبيرينسز وذ لبانيز بانكس ان نيويورك هاو امبورتنت ار ذا ايكونوميكال اند فاينانشال اسبيكت وين Uh, we talk about uh, Lebanese immigrants and their contributions uh, to the Lebanese economy. I'm asking Dr. Sergio that you have worked with many organizations outside and you have a lot of experience with in New York. What is important is the economic and economic issues, but we talk about the Lebanese workers outside and their contribution to the Lebanese economy. As you rightfully mentioned, uh, I was very involved uh, since a very young age uh, with Lebanese diaspora organizations. And that begins really with my father, uh, f- because since his, his very young age, he was engaged and involved with the World Lebanese Cultural Union. And through him, I got in the interest into this organization and I established the youth movement in the 80s and organized the first Congress. Uh, for Lebanese descendants in Uruguay in 1986. So I was uh, very engaged with the Lebanese community and later on in my life, I became a banker for a, for a Lebanese bank in New York and worked uh, with the diaspora of Latin America uh, uh, specifically. Uh, but um, y- y- the question you ask is pres- specifically, how does the Lebanese diaspora cooperate economically? And I would, I would go before that, you know, the, the Lebanese diaspora is very important in economic terms, but it's also very important in many other ways, you know, socially, politically, ideologically. When you think of, of Lebanon, when Lebanon was formed, before Lebanon became independent and before Lebanon was established as a nation, there were different Lebanese Uh, organizations in the diaspora like the Alliance Alliance Libanese in Egypt or in in France or in Argentina or in Brazil or the world uh, or the Lebanese Union that were acting in New York also in Egypt they were very influential in the Lebanese independent movement and the establishment of Lebanon as a separate state so all these organizations were from the diaspora so the diaspora was elementary in, in in establishing the Lebanese state and later on contribute uh, throughout its life, uh, uh, you know, uh, economically, uh, with the contribution of the diaspora, sending remittances, sending money, uh, working abroad, but always uh, maybe going back to the villages, uh, the original villages where they emigrated from and building uh, houses or improving the family homes or buying more land for the family. So many, many of the Lebanese who left came back to Lebanon and improved the life of the Lebanese or helped their families who stayed behind economically. And, but also they brought ideas, they brought social innovations. You know, when the, the immigrants lived abroad in countries like Brazil or Argentina and the United States, they learned a new type of life. They were used to the coexistence that is normal in the Lebanese life in terms of religious coexistence or in terms of living with people with other, from, with, from other beliefs. But in the diaspora, you learn 
to live across different social lives, social layers of, of the community. Your neighbors may be from a completely different country. The, the, the kids you go to school with probably are educated uh, uh, you know, in a different religious uh, community or they, have from a complete, they are from a completely different social background. And all that interaction that the Lebanese abroad learn to uh, live in their own lives, they brought back to Lebanon and they improve in a way uh, the, 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 the identity of Lebanon in, in the sense that they learn to be even more cosmopolitan than they were naturally were because of the, uh, of the different cultures and religions that are influencing the life and the history of Lebanon. So this is the, the, the contribution to the diaspora. You know, when you, when you go and you see in the villages, uh, the nicest houses normally were the ones who belonged to the immigrants who had come back and constructed red roof houses or two floor houses. And it was recognized, ah, that's the house of the, of the immigrants, you know? So, and, and those families, they had more money to buy probably more land or to develop more land. So even the people who stay behind related to the immigrants were doing much better because of the immigrants. So, and uh, it's, it's very important that the, the Lebanese always were present in terms of remittances of, of funds and money. Uh, you know, uh, Lebanon is considered uh, one of the biggest recipients of diaspora remittances in the world. And it's estimated that about $8.8 .8 billion come to Lebanon from the diasporic communities uh, in terms of remittances. Uh, and that's it's a huge amount of money. Uh, in, on average, it's like $11,000 per, per person that uh, outside Lebanon, about 700, 800 people send, uh, 800,000 people send this money to Lebanon. And this contributes literally to, to uh, to project on the economy of, of the relatives who are the recipients of these of this remittances. Also, you have to uh, understand that the Lebanese uh, diaspora is, is one of the largest investors in Lebanon in, in real estate, in, in, in the development of, of different companies or new, uh, new uh, factories and manufacturing in the agricultural sector. Uh, many, a large part of this money comes from uh, Lebanese diaspora. Uh, also, uh, unfortunately, I have to say now that the depositors, the largest depositors in the Lebanese banks are the Lebanese diaspora. I'm saying uh, unfortunately because now they are stuck like, like a lot of people in Lebanon with the money in the banks and these banks have lent the money to the central bank or to the Lebanese government and this money is no longer in the banks so they cannot withdraw it. So uh, the Lebanese diaspora is suffering from this as, as much or in equal terms as the Lebanese are suffering from this situation. Uh, the Lebanese diaspora is probably uh, one of the biggest contributors to tourism in Lebanon. You know, a very large number of Lebanese uh, diaspora members come to Lebanon every summer and they spend their money, they help the, 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 for, you know, for the development of, of the restaurants and they help for the development of the hotel industry and all the services that come with it because the majority of the people that come to Lebanon still are, are members of the Lebanese diaspora besides the regular tourists that visit the country from the Gulf or from Europe. But the, the, the contribution of the diaspora is, is very, very large. And in terms of education, you know, the, the diaspora is highly educated as are the Lebanese, but they bring a completely different uh, type of uh, education and values. You know, many of the members of, of many of many Lebanese went and have uh, an education abroad, and they when they came back to Lebanon, they have a wider scope or or a larger view of the world and a more uh, cosmopolitan view uh, that they you know that they have they had when they, before they left the country. So this is are all the different contributions that the diaspora has, and they are all crucial for the development of the country. نعم بيقول السيد سيرجو انه انخرطت الجيل الجيل اللي انخرط بالجاليه اللبنانيه واخذ هالشيء من والده لانه كان كثير منخرط بالقضايا اللبنانيه اسس الحركه الشبابيه بالثمانينات وبال 1986 نظم المجلس الاول للمتحدرين من اصول لبنانيه 
بالاوروغواي واكيد نحن بنحييه كثير على هيدي الخطوه وبعدين صار مصرفي لمصرف لبناني بنيويورك بيقول انه المغتربين اللبنانيين مهمين كثير على على تعيد الثقافه الاقتصادي السياسي ومش بس اذا فينا نقول المالي وحتى العقائد وقبل الاستقلال او استقلال لبنان حتى كان في كثير منظمات لبنانيه بالخارج مثل اليانس ليبانيز بمصر بالبرازيل بنيويورك كانوا مؤثرين على استقلال لبنان ولاحقا المغتربين ساهموا بالاقتصاد وارسال الاموال لعائلاتهم ويرجعوا لديعهم يعمروا فيها ويفتحوا بيوت بديعهم وكثير منهم عادوا الى لبنان وساعدوا اهل بلدهم وحتى نقلوا افكار وعقائد وتقاليد جديدة متطورة من من الغرب خاصة اللي اجوا من الأرجنتين ومن البرازيل ومن أمريكا وكل هالأشياء طورت الهوية اللبنانية لبنان يعد أكثر الأكثر استفادة من عائدات الانتشار تبعه بيحكي عن 8.8 بليون دولار بيجوا من المغتربين للبنان وهن اكثر المستثمرين هن المستثمرين المغتربين في لبنان كمان حتى بالحاله الراهنه اللي عم بيمرق فيها لبنان فقدان السيوله كمان عم بياثر على المغتربين عم بيعانوا مثلهم مثل القاطنين بلبنان حتى هن يعني منخرطين بالمجال السياحي لانه كمان المغتربين عم بيساهموا فيها Uh, Dr. Sergio Khalil, when did you establish the Lebanese Center of Studies and how does it uh, operate and what are the Lebanese topics uh, you lecture about? I'm going to ask Dr. Khalil, how did you establish the Lebanese Center of Studies and what are the topics you lecture about? I'm going to ask Dr. Khalil, how did you establish the Lebanese Center of Studies and what Uh, while as attending conferences and events of the Lebanese diaspora in, in Latin America in particular, uh, where I found that there were a lot of confusion uh, about Lebanon. You know, they, they confused Lebanon with Syria, they confused Lebanon with the larger Arab settings. So although we are part of the larger Arab uh, environment and we are part of the Middle East and we, have, we are next to Syria, but that doesn't make us equal to, to Syria and that doesn't make us equal uh, to the rest of the Middle East. We are a very specific country, very unique country in which we have our own identity, we have our particularities, which is the, 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 the specificity of the capability of coexistence, religious coexistence, the idea of uh, pluralistic ideas, that you know, ideas that can be discussed freely, they can be expressed freely. Uh, uh, we are a multicultural country in which we have influences from, from Europe, influences from our history, you know, the Romans, the Persians, the Greeks, the Arabs, the, the, the Turks, so many empires, the French, so many empires that pass through Lebanon. We cannot clearly uh, uh, locate Lebanon in one specific area but it's a really multicultural country is a really multi-religious it's multi-community because it's not just that we have muslims and christians within christians we have so many different communities with different differences of of of, of you know traditions difference of uh, of dogmatic beliefs and differential differences the theological differences and, and and the rights different are different The same happens with Islam. I mean, it's not like we have just Muslims. I mean, we have in, in, in Lebanon, we have a, a lot of smaller communities within Islam, which are the Sunnis, the Shiites, the, 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 uh, the Twelvers, the Seveners, we have Alawites, we have Druze. So it's a very complex society. It's a very complex unit to study and needs to, it, it deserves to be studied independently. It deserves to be understood as a whole and as a unique uh, situation in the Middle East. And that's why we established Celibal, in which the main idea is to understand what is the Lebanese identity. And by Lebanese identity, I truly understand uh, is this idea of coexistence, this idea of multiculturalism, of pluralism, this cosmopolitan feeling that we have in Lebanon, that it's been lost uh, everywhere around our country. And that's why I think it, it needs to be somehow first understood and then uh, to be able to preserve it and, and to project it uh, as, as, as our heritage uh, of Lebanese abroad. So Celibal 
basically organizes uh, lectures, classes, we organize symposiums, we have, we have different classes about different subjects, uh, anything that has to do with Lebanon, from you know, uh, historical elements, the languages of Lebanon, uh, we, um, we study the history of Lebanon, the political organization of Lebanon, the religious communities of Lebanon, and every year we, we, we teach in different universities, not only just to the Lebanese community, but to the broader public, because we want to explain what Lebanon is about, and we want to do it from the Lebanese point of view, because it's not unusual that Lebanon is explained by non-Lebanese, maybe by journalists or maybe by foreign embassies that we have the particular interest in talking about Lebanon or, or spreading uh, uh, rumors or sometimes uh, half truths about Lebanon uh, you know, from neighboring countries and that, that normally have given us a negative influence and a negative image. So we have to explain Lebanon by ourselves and we have to do it with the understanding of who's receiving the information. So we believe that in the diaspora we're qualified, we understand Lebanon and we understand the diaspora and we understand the, the different countries in where we live in South America and Latin America. So we can access the, the, the you know, uh, and, and we can provide education in a very um, a didactic way and in a very, um, a uh, simplified way that it's understood, it could be understood by the general public and as well as by the Lebanese. So we organize different uh, symposiums every year. In the past year, we, 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 there's, we've been born uh, six years ago, so we had uh, six different uh, international symposiums. The first one was in Costa Rica, in which we talk about um, the Lebanese identity, uh, describing uh, what I just mentioned before. Our second uh, uh, symposium was in, in Bogota, in Colombia, in which we discussed the, Syrian, the effects of the Syrian war and the effects on Lebanon specifically. The third symposium we did in Montevideo, Uruguay, and it was about the larger Middle East conflicts and how this affects Lebanon, the different conflicts that happen in the Middle East, the Arab-Israeli conflict, the Saudi-Iranian conflict, the geopolitical conflict of the big powers, uh, the Syrian war, the Arab Springs, how all this uh, affects Lebanon. So our fourth symposium was back again in Colombia and then we, uh, we talked about the specific subject of the US policy under the Donald Trump administration, the Middle East policy under the Trump administration. And it was very interesting because we bring experts that they were connected to the different uh, 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 subjects. For instance, in Colombia, we brought a former uh, advisor of President Macron, a former advisor of President Donald Trump. We brought an important Lebanese journalist and a professor from Chatham House in London and a Colombian professor also as well to give us the local ingredient and the local flavor. So we all studied this. The important thing is that we always bring people with different points of view, with different ideas that they don't necessarily agree on what they believe or what they are explaining. So it is it's giving us a wider scope. But the common, the common thing that they all have is that they all are Lebanese. So we provide the Lebanese perspective, different perspectives, not necessarily one unique perspective, but it's from the point of view of Lebanon. And we really believe in Selival in diversity. We believe in the uh, the different opinions, and I will explain that in, in, in further detail a bit later. So our fifth symposium was uh, about um, was in Mexico City, and it was about the Lebanon as the last uh, bastion of coexistence and cosmopolitan pluralism that is disappearing in the Middle East, and we should preserve it in Lebanon. Our last symposium, well, it happened last year, and it was in Biblos at the Lebanese American University campus. Uh, and we talked about the Lebanon challenges and opportunities, and we kind of touched upon what, what's happening in Lebanon today. Uh, so we did discuss what we saw somehow coming, this crisis, this, this problem that Lebanon is facing. We were talking about it already back in July of last year. Uh, so, but going back to uh, what, you know, the principles of Celibal is, in a way, it's reflected in, in our logo. When you see that logo, it's, it's kind of a, the cedar of Lebanon, but in a very specific uh, way, it shows that, uh, you know, uh, it, it tries to depict a cedar which is not finished. 
Why it's not finished? Because we don't really know everything about uh, Lebanon, what need, we need to know. So we need to learn more, we need to study more, we need to understand better even the country and its people. Uh, then you see, you know, the, the different tones of greens. Uh, the triangles are of different tones because we don't uh, always agree that Lebanon has the same tone. So we have different gradients of the green and, 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 and we don't all agree on everything. And then you have some triangles going to the right, some triangles going to the left, some uh, to the left, some go up, some go down, because we really believe in diversity uh, of opinions. We believe in the, the concept of uh, uh, through discussions and through debate, we can always learn more and we can always contribute uh, to Lebanon more. Now, what, what is uh, Celibal doing on a regular basis? Well, we, we teach, uh, we give lectures in, in different places. Uh, uh, we organize conferences. Uh, um, we are, uh, in, in my case personally, I'm a pro professor at Salamanca University on Middle Eastern Studies. I also teach in uh, the Catholic University of uh, Buenos Aires in Argentina. And, uh, and, and and a Mexican university, so I travel quite a lot, always explaining Lebanon, always talking about Lebanon, and I think this is our, an ongoing project. Besides that, our latest development has, has has been the creation of the what we call the Academia Libanesa or the Lebanese Academy online, and this is an online tool in which we put courses for people to take. Uh, and these courses are always about something related to Lebanon. We have a, a course on geopolitics of the Middle East. We have a course on the languages of Lebanon, you know, uh, where we teach how uh, uh, the Phoenician language and the Aramaic language and the Arabic and French influence the, the language that you speak in Lebanon today. So it's a combination of all those languages and we have created almost a unique language called Lebanese. Uh, we also have a course on Lebanese identity, in which we go through the history, we go through the geography, we, draw, we go through the religious communities, we go through the governmental organizations and institutions that permit us to understand what really Lebanon is. And we have so many other courses coming up. We have a course uh, on Lebanese gastronomy. We are going to have soon a course also explaining everything that you need to know about Lebanon and you didn't know. Uh, it's going to be uh, partially uh, fun stories or, or, or some uh, things that really uh, novelties that we discovered and we, we're going to put it in the form of a course. Uh, we are going to have another course on the political history of uh, the ideas of Lebanon or political ideas so in which we discuss the different political parties, what do they believe, what do they understand, what do they support. Uh, we also will have a course uh, soon on the different religious communities of Lebanon to understand each one of them in, in its own way and then as a combination uh, Lebanon as a whole. So that's the role of Celibal and it's, it's a really uh, large role. We are, uh, our members are mostly people from the Lebanese diaspora from different countries, you know, professors, people really educated and in, term, in terms of their knowledge of Lebanon or we have also members who are not from the region, but they are highly qualified and well-known professors and, and, and or journalists or teachers from, from Lebanon itself, from the United Kingdom, from France, from the United States, that they are contributing to us, they are coming to our seminars and they are explaining to us what Lebanon is. So it's, 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 it's composed of, it's a very open organization. Uh, anybody can participate. We invite people, um, uh, to contribute and to participate in our lectures and, and some people might come back, some people we, we might find new people. All the time we are trying to bring new ideas and new proposals and, and new um, uh, themes and features to, uh, to improve our, our work on, on Lebanon and, and to teach the diaspora. نعم بايجاز بقول انه بال 2013 اسس سيليبال لانه جراء المحاضرات والمؤتمرات اللي كان يحضرها حول العالم كان يلحظ انه ما في كثير فهم لكيان وهويه لبنان مثل ما لازم وكان يحضر كمان كثير بمؤتمرات بامريكا اللاتينيه وهنيك لاحظ هيدي الثغرات ونحن كلبنانيين منتشرين كثير حول العالم 
وكمان بيعملوا كثير لينك او بيعملوا اذا بدنا نقول مقارنه بيننا كلبنانيين وبين الدول العربيه ولكن لبنان هو عنده ثقافه مختلفه وفريده من نوعها ومثل ما بنعرف تاثر بكثير غزوات يونانيه فرنسيه فرنسا كانت عندنا صليبيين وغيره الاختلاف بلبنان حتى بالطوائف بحد ذاتها في عندنا اختلاف وكان من الضروري نفهم هويه التعدديه اللبنانيه والحفاظ على هالغنى اللي موجود سليبا بتدرس التاريخ السياسه الثقافه بكثير جامعات ولكثير اشخاص منحدرين من اصول لبنانيه او لا والمدرسين اذا فينا نقول هن من اصول لبنانيه وبيعرفوا كثير منيح عن الهويه اللبنانيه لانه تنقدر نفهم القضيه اللبنانيه اللي لازم نكون عايشينها وكمان بنظموا كثير مؤتمرات عالميه مثلا بكوستاريكا عم بيصير في تنظيم لمؤتمرات ببوغوتا بكولومبيا بالاوروغواي واخيرا كمان صار في بكولومبيا حكينا عن بكولومبيا حكيوا عن سياسات الشرق اوسطيه تحت اداره الرئيس الامريكي دونالد ترامب وسليبا بتامن بالتعدديه والاراء المختلفه السنه الماضيه كانوا بلبنان وبجبال تحديدا بال في مؤتمر وناقشوا مشاكل لبنان والازمات يلي عم بمر فيها لبنان لوجو الارز بيحكي عنه وكنا شفناه بالمقابله هو ارز منا كامله مع عده الوان تدرجات للون الاخضر وهذا بيرمز للتعدديه وبيقول انه نحن لازم نتعلم اكثر واكثر عن لبنان قد ما نعرف عن لبنان بضل ناقص بتضل ناقصه معلوماتنا ومن امن انه التعدديه هي غنى لبنان دكتور سيرجيو ديسبايت اول ذا لبنانيز بروبلم وات ميكس ا لبنانيز لونج فور هيز كونتري thus returning uh, returning back عم بسال دكتور سيرجيو انه بالرغم من كل المشاكل يلي بيمرق فيها لبنان بضل اللبناني المغترب متعلق بلبنان وحابب uh, يعود الى لبنان uh, ليش كيف بنفسر هذا الشيء Lebanon is in us you know it's, it's part of us so uh, every time Lebanon suffers we suffer with it you know we 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 really Uh, have Lebanon inside our, our, our bodies, inside our souls, inside our hearts. So it doesn't matter how Lebanon uh, performs and how bad it goes or how sad it is, we're always going to be drawn to Lebanon and attracted to Lebanon uh, because it's, it's part of our life and it, it will never end being part of our life. And you know, uh, like once you are born Lebanese or you're You are a children of Lebanese or grandchildren of Lebanese. You, you, you can never stop being Lebanese. So uh, Lebanon uh, is it, really attractive to us, uh, even during the hardship, even during uh, difficult times. Uh, because this is like a mother, you know, Lebanon is our, our, our mother country. And no matter how sick is your mother, no matter how lonely she is, or no, no matter how, how grave she might be, Uh, you always love your mother and you always come back to your mother and it, it's always the best thing you will ever have. Uh, so uh, that's the way we see Lebanon, you know, it's not just our mother country, it's our mother. So uh, that's kind of the relationship that we have in the diaspora with Lebanon. So the attraction is like the one that a, children, uh, a child has with his, uh, with his mother or her mother. نعم بيقول دكتور ساجي انه كل ما لبنان بينوجع نحن بنتوجع كمان معه كمغتربين وبدخلنا موجود لبنان بعقولنا بنفوسنا ودائما بدنا نرجع على لبنان وهو شقفه من حياتنا لبنان يعني بنحبه بكل الاوقات وحتى بالاوقات الصعبه وهو وطننا الام وبيقول شغله كثير حلوه انه بالرغم من مرض امنا ممكن نتخلى عنها يعني قد ما تكون امنا مريضه هل ممكن نحن نتخلى عنها وهيك حال حال او علاقه اللبنانيين المغتربين ب بوطنهم لبنان what is the main factor that allows a uh, lebanese to excel abroad do lebanese have special genes does it play a special role عم بسال دكتور ريسيرج انه شو السر انه اللبنانيين يبرعون في الخارج وقت يسافروا هل هناك الجينات اللبنانيه بتلعب دوره in reality i think that anybody who emigrates has an impulse to to do better uh, anybody who leaves the country 
makes a, a tremendous sacrifice because it's it's leaving everything. It's leaving its family, it's leaving his roots, it's leaving his village, it's leaving his, his life. Uh, so it's not really uh, easy to emigrate. Once somebody makes the decision to emigrate, uh, which is a very tough de decision, and it's not a pleasant decision because nobody wants to really live Normally you do it because you want a better life, you want to achieve something that you cannot achieve in your country. So um, you make a special effort. You, you, it's like you have to succeed to make it worth leaving everything behind. So I think it's a special push for the people who emigrated. And you know, I'm, I'm, um, in, my, in my family, we have been emigrants uh, all, all our lives. My grandparents were emigrants. My father was an immigrant. I was an immigrant. Uh, I, I went to a different country to where I was, from where I was born. So, and it's very difficult. It's not. It's not easy. And then you become uh, uh, really mature once you you learn that how difficult it is to immigrate to emigrate, um, and, and you you value better the country that you came from and the country you went to. But I think the question should be uh, put in a different way. I mean, the question you ask is why are Lebanese so successful when they emigrate? Uh, my question is why the Lebanese who don't emigrate aren't that success successful? And maybe the reason has to do with uh, why Lebanon doesn't evolve and why Lebanon is not a better country. Uh, uh, instead of letting all its people leave to look for better opportunities. So I think this has to do uh, with the, the politics in Lebanon, with the organization of Lebanon, and why is it that the Lebanese must leave in order to succeed? So the question should be turned around a bit and saying, what should we do for the Lebanese not to have to leave in order to succeed? What does Lebanon have to offer, or what is Lebanon not offering its own people so they have to leave in order to be successful. So maybe I should ask the Lebanese that question is, why are you letting these people leave? Why are you not allowing them to succeed in the country? And I think when you analyze what's going on today in Lebanon, when you read the news, uh, when you read the situation in Lebanon today, I think the, the answer is right there. It's, it's very simple. Uh, I think the Lebanese political class had failed Lebanon and the emigrants have not. So in a way, the emigrants, uh, the Lebanese diaspora, has always come back to help and to contribute to Lebanon, despite all the woes, despite all the problems, uh, and despite the political class in Lebanon. So, uh, and I think the answer lies in, you know, maybe we should do some reforms, maybe we do, should promote some changes in Lebanon so uh, in order of instead uh, enlarging our diaspora, we would enlarge our, our country. Um, so uh, sometimes, you know, we describe, uh, uh, you know, there is a German miracle and there is a Japanese miracle or the Chilean miracle. Every country has a miracle. And it happens to be that the miracle of Lebanon, it's his diaspora. We are the miracle because we are the ones who always keep coming back. We always keep saving the country. And I think we are the ones who are going to come back again and, and save Lebanon. But I think we should impose conditions. You know, we should tell uh, the government that there are certain things are not allowed to happen anymore. Uh, that certain level of, 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 uh, of political maneuvering or political uh, clientelism of corruption uh, is not acceptable anymore. Uh, the Lebanese are not willing to accept it and we are not willing to accept it. So maybe this is the direction in which we would, uh, we would answer these questions. نعم بيقول دكتور سيرجيو انه بالحقيقه كل المغتربين وقت يغادروا البلد بيحاولوا انه ينجحوا بالخارج لانه هن تركوا بلدهم وهذا الشيء صعب جدا هن تحدوا الكل وتركوا البلد وبس واحد يسافر هذا امر لبرات البلد اكيد هذا شيء وقرار جدا جريء وجدا صعب ولازم ينجح في الخارج ما عنده حل ثاني الغربه بيقول حضرته انه صعب جدا والسؤال الاهم 
الهند بالنسبة لإله هو ليش اللبنانيين داخل لبنان ما عم بيقدروا ينجحوا ببلدهم وليش لبنان منه بلد بيأمن فرص العمل لأبنائه وبيدور عليها بالخارج بيقول إنه شو لازم لبنان يقوم ليمنح أبنائه وبلبنان خاصة فرص العمل بيقول إنه السياسيين بلبنان للأسف خذلوا لبنان وخذلوا كمان المغتربين ومن من العجائب في الدنيا هي هو لبنان لانه هو ككيان وكهويه هو عجيب ببقائه والمغتربين هن كمان عم بيساهموا بطريقه كثير كبيره بتطوير وتقدم لبنان. دكتور سيرجي خليل I'm going to ask you a different question far away from the politics and the economics and the immigrants. I'm going to ask you about women and especially uh, the Lebanese woman. Uh, as I know, you are well known uh, for serving a special place to, uh, to Lebanese uh, women uh, and you always call to support uh, women causes, especially her right to grant the nationality to her uh, children. Um, Based on your experience, uh, Dr. Sergio, uh, are women in Latin America uh, ahead of Lebanese women uh, with relative to law regulations? I'm just as Dr. Sergio, no, and I'm very personally as the Dr. Sergio, be can the المرأة وخاصة المرأة اللبنانية مكان جدا خاص. عنده وعم بساله انه هو بناصر كمان قضيه منح الجنسيه لاولادها بلبنان وكمان عم بساله انه هل النساء بامريكا اللاتينيه هن هن متقدمات على النساء اللبنانيات فيما يختص بالقوانين I'm a firm believer in the in the respect for the Lebanese constitution and that's why I I think that you know there are certain laws in Lebanon that are discriminatory against women and sometimes uh, I've heard the stories that this is well, you know, maybe some religious establishment of certain communities and well, the law is equal for everybody and it should, we should have uh, respect for a woman because they are 50% of our society and they happen to be the best 50% of our society uh, and, 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 and we should definitely provide for their welfare and for the equality before the law as the Lebanese uh, constitution uh, demands and requests to be uh, respected and um, for instance one big problem that I have is uh, you know the women don't have the right to give the citizenship to their descendants and to their children so this is totally unfair and if you were talking about when you talk about the diaspora for instance if we would follow that rule and that law then half of our diaspora would be non-existent because you would deny this, the right of citizenship to of half of the people that live abroad and half of the people that are descendants of Lebanese uh, mothers. So this is something that needs to be changed. This is something that needs to be modified immediately. Uh, Lebanon needs bigger participation from women uh, I think there would be a big improvement, but not the participation which is going to be patronized by maybe a brother or a sister or a politician or a wife or the politician. You know, women have their own independent way of thinking and very smart thinking, and they should contribute uh, as they have been contributing to uh, in, in the Lebanese revolution. You know, in many cases, they are being carried out by the very, very... Uh, uh, a valiant woman, you know, and, and a very courageous woman that are carrying the flag of Lebanon and they are carrying the, the, the necessity for reform and they are talking about the, the need for, for a better country. So I definitely believe that this has to be a part of the, not the, the, the immediate future, but part of the present of Lebanon. If we don't solve that situation now, uh, uh, you know, we are going to delay uh, the application of equality. It's as simple as that. Now, of course, Lebanese woman may be better than in other countries, but I'm not comparing Lebanon to other countries. I'm, I'm saying what's best for Lebanon. So I cannot say that Lebanon, in Lebanon, women are better than in the rest of the Middle East. Uh, I don't really care how they are in the Middle East. I do care how they are in Lebanon. And you ask me to compare the Lebanese woman to the Lebanese woman in Latin America, you know, we, uh, we have less of a patriarchal system in Latin America. We have had precedents in uh, several countries, uh, at least two that I can think of, that we had uh, female presidents and uh, female politicians. So they are very involved in, parli in parliament also. 
in, in, you know, in, in very large numbers, I'm not sure if it's equal or not, the equality doesn't, it doesn't mean in terms of, of numbers, it means in terms of opportunities, you know, women should have the same opportunities that men have, their salary should be equated, there is no need to have a man bet with a better salary than a woman, or there is no job that a woman cannot perform better than a man. I think if we improve that, we are already recognizing that we are equating society in a way that it's, 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 it's a better society, and it's fairer society. نعم ما بيقول إنه حسب الدستور اللبناني كل المواطنين في لبنان هم متساوون أمام القانون ولكن هناك قوانين مشحفة وتميز بين الرجل والمرأة والقانون واضح بهذا الشكل الدستور واضح خمسين بالمية من المجتمع اللبناني مكون من النساء وهن بيشتغلوا كتير هن أذكياء كتير وعندهم الحق بإعطاء الجنسية لا أولادهم وهذا منه عادل هذا لازم يتعدل حالا لبنان بحاجه لانخراط النساء اكثر واكثر بكثير ميادين مش لانه بيا وزير او خيا نائب او او يمكن جوزه بالحق السياسي هي لازم توصل لازم توصل لان امراه او لان امراه كفوءه النساء اذكياء جدا حسب قوله وبناصر الامور الحياتيه بناصر الامور الحياتيه بلبنان افضل ولازم يكونوا دائما هن اذا فينا نقول الخط الامامي لمستقبل وحاضر لبنان بامريكا اللاتينيه ما عندهم اذا فينا نقول السلطه الابويه مثل بلبنان ولكن هن كان عندهم رئيسه جمهوريه لبنانيه عفوا من النساء وكان عندهم نائبه او نواب عندهم نساء وزراء نساء وكمان عم بيحكي عن قصه المعاشات عم بيحكي عن قصه فرص العمل لازم يكون في مساواه على كافه الاصعده بلبنان To end with you, uh, Dr. Sergio, uh, what is your opinion about what is going on in Lebanon? I'm going to ask Dr. Sergio Han, if we can say about what is going on in the Lebanon that is currently on the Lebanon. I think today's uh, problem uh, in Lebanon can be traced Uh, some of that to uh, the origins of the Lebanese state in which, you know, uh, uh, the national pact was established in which basically there were two negations. Lebanon is not part of the Arab world or is not part of uh, any other nation in the Middle East and Lebanon is not part of the West. And, and that, those two negations uh, were negating two realities in, the, in fact. So instead of a national pact, I, I, I think it evolved into a uh, fictional pact in which uh, the two sides uh, that, that established basically the pact were still believing in, in those realities they were negating. So there was one segment of the Lebanese population who were still believing in a, lar in a, in a larger unity maybe with, with Syria or a larger uh, country within the Arab world. And there was another segment of the population which still wanted closer ties to Europe. So that's why I called it the fictional pact, because all of a sudden there, were, there was a fiction that the two realities evolved in Lebanon. And if you look at the 50s in Lebanon, we, we saw a crisis in 58, which was a result of, 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 of two realities that were constantly negated, but they were existing in society. So this, then, this national pact, Uh, during the 70s, it became a factional pact in which different factions took over the country and they, they became militias and they controlled different segments of the, of, the, of, the, of the economy, of the population, even the geography. Uh, they, they, they were along sectarian lines and they were uh, factions really that divided the country. I'm not going to get into many details, but the reality is that if you look at this as a Lebanese, these were factions that they were d diving up the country in pieces and, and that was uh, 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 changed at the Taif Agreement, which it's also uh, in a way a functional pact. Uh, so for, we go from national pact to fictional pact to factional in terms of faction. And, 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 and with Syria in, in power, it became the functional pact because it was functional to the Syrian interests. Uh, so basically, uh, everything was functional to the Syrian interest as for as long as they were in power and they were controlling. They divided the different uh, uh, benefits of dividing the country among the different sectarian uh, groups 
or different militias or different poli they, they became political parties. Uh, so they they have their own ministers. They were distributing the, the gains and the state was becoming weaker and that was losing ground to all these different vested interested of political groups, of political parties or political leaders that divided the country among for, according to their own interests. And that takes us to today in which we have really uh, a system which the, the, basically the politicians are, are dividing uh, their, their spoils of, of, of the state according to their uh, private interests. That's why you have so many fights to, for, for, to, for, to control the ministries, you know. There is so much corruption and clientelism and there is so much uh, 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 internal uh, 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 distribution of, 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 of interest among the parties that control the government, that one takes care of one part, the other takes care of another part. Everybody's happy except the Lebanese people who are, are, are being seen in the past 30 years, a, 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 you know, a, a declination or a decline of their uh, lifestyle and of the services that the state is supposed to is supposed to give them. So we we ended up having not uh, not a public water system that functions, not a, a healthcare system that really functions well. You have to go to the private healthcare system. We have no uh, uh, in, in, with the electricity system. It doesn't work. We don't have electricity twenty four hours. So you need to go to the private enterprises. All all that. Uh, you have the, 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 the problem with the trash, so, uh, so, so we need private companies to take care of our trash or we have to take care of our trash. So nothing uh, functions at the state level because the, the state institutions were uh, divided up among all these groups. And that's why I think that the Lebanese have, the, have decided to come up with the uh, national act. So we go from the national pact to the fictional pact to the Factional pact to the functional pact, and today is the national act, which is the Lebanese people revolting against this system that doesn't provide them for their basic needs, that doesn't provide us for the welfare they deserve, the human decency they deserve, and for for because they don't want to emigrate anymore, they don't want to enlarge the numbers of the diaspora. They want a better Lebanon. They want a better country. And for that, we have to stop corruption. We have to stop clientelism. We have to stop this system that has been imposed on us for the past 30 years. And and this is what. Uh, the, the people manifestation, uh, the, the people demonstrating in, in the streets from Nabatie to, to, to Tyr to, uh, to uh, Tripoli to Beirut to Baalbek to uh, villages in, 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 in Mount Lebanon, villages in North Lebanon or villages in the Veka, they are all asking for the same thing. We're basically asking for human dignity and this is where the diaspora is with them also. So I think there is a new, it's a time for a new coalition. You know, in Lebanon for too long, we've been talking about us versus them. Then who is us and who is them? You know, sometimes we were seeing, oh, us is Christians and them is Muslims or vice versa. So us, Muslim versus them, Christians. And we were saying, you know, us uh, uh, um, uh, from this political party and then from that political party. But then, then, you know, we are, the Lebanese are discovering a new us and the news them, you know, us being the Lebanese people and them is the political class that doesn't represent us anymore. So we are, we are rediscovering the, the structure of the Lebanese society and we are engaging in a new cross-sectarian, cross-social uh, classes, uh, close uh, geographical areas of Lebanon. And we are all discovering that we are citizens of the same country. We, are, we, we want to live together. Uh, but with decency, what we want for us is the same that somebody who lives in another village and belongs to another religious community wants. So we have discovered that we have uh, uh, many common elements with, with uh, members of the Lebanese society that we thought a long time ago, we thought that they were the others. Now we're discovering that we belong to the same group. We are part of the same group. And this is the new us, the Lebanese people, with the diaspora supporting them and, and, and them or the opposite side is uh, not necessarily uh, some foreigner, is not necessarily some, some uh, 
uh, always suspect enemies of Lebanon, but sometimes we have to realize that the biggest enemies of Lebanon are within our system, and this is what we have to clean up, and this is what we need to do in order to have a better Lebanon in which the diaspora would keep trusting the country, uh, uh, they, we will keep contributing to uh, Lebanon as a society, and we'll, we'll keep uh, believing in Lebanon as a country. So we can build it together, uh, we, can, we can reconstruct our nation, and uh, eventually create a new Republic of Lebanon in which people will be honestly represented, democratically elected, and will eliminate corruption, we will eliminate clientelistic uh, policies, and we eliminate the sectarian division, which is totally senseless because we are not divided among sects. We are divided among honest people and dishonest people. نعم بيقولوا انه المشاكل بلبنان هي من من كثير زمان من وقت ميثاق الميثاق الوطني اللي هو عباره عن ميثاق وهم بالنسبه له لا لانه الواقع اللبناني والفرقاء اللبنانيين يلي حطوا هذا الميثاق بعضهم مصرين على عوامل جدا وعلى معلومات جدا مغلوطه عن لبنان وموجوده بالميثاق الوطني في انقسام بالاراء وبيقول انه لبنان صحيح هو ذو وجه عربي ولكن منه عربي الهويه عنده اذا فينا نقول عنده نفحه خاصه عنده عوامل بت 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 تخليه يكون متنوع وعنده هالتعددية والتنوع بيقول انه كمان ما بدنا ننسى الثورة اللي صارت عام 1958 وقت انقسم اللبنانيين بين الاشخاص يلي بأيدوا العرب والاشخاص يلي بأيدوا المحور الامريكي وبيقول انه التطرق للفترة اللي كانت كمان فيها موجودة موجود موجودين السوريين في لبنان من بعد الحرب الاهلية الانقسامات يلي صارت جراء هل التدخلات الخارجيه بالشؤون اللبنانيه تطرق لموضوع الفساد والزبائنيه بالمؤسسات الحكوميه واخيرا الثوره اللي صارت ب 17 تشرين يلي امتدت على كل او من كل المناطق اللبنانيه وطلبت بالعداله الاجتماعيه ومحاربه الفساد والزبائنيه ونحن كمغتربين راح نضل عم نناضل لاجل امان لبنان وتقدم لبنان وتطور لبنان شكرا كثير لك دكتور سيرجيو خليل وار سو اونورد اجين اند اجين تو هاف يو with us in this interview at Mariam TV. Um, we are so honored uh, of all the Lebanese, uh, of all the immigrants, uh, Lebanese immigrants there in America, in Brazil, in Colombia, in Chile, in all the Latin America uh, country, American country. And uh, we hope that we, we are going to see you back in Lebanon when everything is going uh, to be uh, done with the coronavirus, of course, and of course, and the lockdown. شكرا كثير مشاهدين على متابعتكم بلبنان وبالخارج ونحن دائما مستعدين للإضاءة على كل الطاقات اللبنانية يلي عم يبرعوا وعم بينشروا الهوية اللبنانية والجمال اللبناني تبع بلاد الأرز لأنه نحن بنفتخر بأبنائنا الموجودين بالخارج ونتمنى لهم كل التوفيق حتى لو هن بعاد عن وطنهم وحتى لو هن ما عم بيستثمروا خبراتهم بلبنان شكرا كثير مشاهدينا لمتابعتكم وإلى اللقاء بحلقات مقبلة انطرونا دايما